Hey everyone, Rob here, and I got some updates on the eruption yet again. It is July 30th, so it's towards the end of the month. Now, we have some news reports coming out that's basically saying, uh, if you're planning on coming to Iceland in September, don't count on the eruption still occurring a month from now. Now, geologist says that people shouldn't wait to go see the eruption because you never know when it's going to end. He says it's a normal length of eruption as it is right now, and it could end in one to two weeks. Now, this is coming from the results of the Laboratory of Volcanology and Natural Hazards at the University of Iceland, and some data from there indicate that the end of the eruption is possible in one to two weeks. If the pro uh, production of the eruption and the productivity of the eruption continues to fall at the same rate that it's been doing over the past little while. Now, Magnus Gudmundsson, a professor of geophysics at the University of Iceland, with a uh, conversation with VCO, the news agency here, he says that the eruption has behaved in a rather traditional manner when it comes to volcanic eruptions overall in Iceland. They occur very high frequency uh, and a powerful eruption at first, and then slowly decrease. And the trend is continuing and we also take a look at this if people are looking at the crater and how the lava is spreading. It's slowing down overall. Now, there's a lot of measurements I posted in the last video or so. And you can take a look there from House School of the Eastlands Eastlands, the University of Iceland, on the uh, decrease in output that the eruption is going on. It's been going on for about three weeks. And the usual duration apparently is between one to four weeks. And that's the most common time here in Iceland. But of course... You can't predict what's going to happen going on. So uh, he's saying, uh, Magnus here, he's thinking that yeah, there's about two weeks left on this particular eruption. So that's one point of view that we're getting. But in conversation with another news agency, which is MBF, uh, we have Thorvald Thorson, And he's saying that if it reduces uh, productivity in this eruption, like it has been doing over the past week, um, yeah, he's also thinking a week or two. And... Uh, same as what we were getting on the other news, everyone's in agreeing that, that it is decreasing and uh, the rate it's going, it's looking at a couple weeks at the absolute top uh, length. But he's saying that it's impossible to predict because we could have some earthquake or some other event that uh, sort of opens up and allows the magma to push up easier into the surface, but also the opposite. And he mentioned that a large earthquake could also block magma and slow it down or stop it altogether. So um, the current eruption has become the second largest eruption out of the three that have been occurring in the Reykjanes Peninsula over the past couple of years. Um, the lava field from the current eruption apparently is about 15 million cubic meters in size, while the size of last year's eruption was 11 million cubic meters. And then the first one back in 2021 was 100 million. So that's a that's quite a big difference between those. But you can see there's a overall consensus that we're looking at another week or two before it dies out. Now, one last thing that we want to take a look at is coming out of uh, the University of Iceland uh, Research Laboratory in Volcanology and Natural Hazards. Uh, you can see here this graph here. The attached map they're saying shows the extent and thickness of the eruption as it was on July 25th. And again, the lava spread covered about 1.27 kilometers squared. The length was 3.2 kilometers and the average thickness was around 10 meters. So quite a bit. The volume of the lava is calculated to be around 13 million cubic meters as we just sort of talked about on the other article. Uh, but they're saying that it's likely an underestimate and possibly 2 million more. Now, the lava is thickest in three places uh, where the lava magma has accumulated in depressions or sort of these low areas. Um, in these places, the lava flow has and is forming lava pools, which are up to 30 meters in depth, which is uh, you can see here on this chart, the red is 35 meters. And then as we go down to this sort of purple is zero. So you can see where it's the thickest. You can see the crater up there. Now, the lava flows from the craters into and through the pools, more or less along the closed channels. And these channels form a transport system under the surface of lava bed, 
which for the most part follows the lava channel from where it was formed in the period from the July of 10th to 19th. Now, apparently this transport system extends from the crater to the active growth area, which lies now eastern part of Meridalur. Uh, there, it moved forward into three main channels. If we take a look at some of these other maps here. So we can see the three uh, main channels, which are the white area arrows on the map. Uh, and the easternmost lava is approximately 100 meters north of the pass that lies directly east of the middle of Mirdalur. So, but they're saying that in order for all of this to flow out of this area, um, the lava in the northeastern part, which is lava pool number three, you can see here, needs to be about three to four meters thicker. Now, the rising surface of lava pool indicates that magma is accumulating in them. And again, if the outflow in the pool is less than the inflow, then the edges of the lava pool can give way and the lava magma erupts in advance, both over and beyond the newly formed lava as can be seen in this photograph. Uh, you can see as well, so we're, we're talking a lot of information uh, as we're sort of going through some of these. We're talking a lot about the productivity and the output coming from this eruption. Now, during the period of July 12th to 17th, which is over five days, the volume of the lava increased by 4 million cubic meters, corresponding to a flow out of the crater of 9 to 10 cubic meters per second. Now, comparing that to the period of July 18 to 25, which is eight days, uh, it gives a volume increase of about half, so 2.3 million meters cubed. Based on these values, the flow throughout the crater is about a third of what it was on July 12 to 7, or about three cubic meters per second. And I think you know the three cubic meters per second, that's sort of the, the threshold of what's able to push out the eruption even more. So I think that's why they're saying it's probably going to end because if it go, goes much below that, it could stop altogether. Um, and they're saying that, of course, as was mentioned, they're probably underestimating the volume for July 18 to 25. Uh, and they say the reason is um, two main things. One, the transport system that formed the first lava uh, has probably been largely depleted by July 19 crater collapse. And they're saying that that subsequently changed the lava flow. When lava began to flow back into the old lava flow, the new magma has filled many of these cavities. So that's one of the reasons that they think that they're underestimating. And the second one is that the thickness of the new lava could have been caused by the transfer of lava magma into the 2021 and 2022 lava areas in Meridalur. And the lava there was then thicker than what they're calculating right now. Now, since all of this additional volume is not taken into account in their calculations, um, they're, again, saying that it's possible that they're underestimating the volume increase for that period. So, that being said, they're saying that it's been reduced the power of the eruption uh, over the past week by 30 to 50%, which is quite a bit. And if the production or productivity of this eruption continues to fall at the same rate, they are also saying, again, with the news agency, everyone's reporting on the same information, uh, if... It continues to decrease at the same rate. They're saying that the end will be in one to two weeks. So there's a lot being covered here. A lot of information and a lot of facts to put out. Uh, I'll try to link to this Facebook post. I'm not sure if you need to be a part of the group, but uh, definitely I'll link to this because unfortunately it's in Icelandic, but perhaps it is nice to see uh, some of these. And they do post things in English every once in a while. You can see... Um, some of this is in English. You can see the, the thickness, length, average volume. So put this, I'll put another link to the House School of Eastland actual data as well. So you can take a look at that and follow along with the charts and the uh, the flow and everything that uh, chemical composition is coming out. So big update, a lot of information, a lot of numbers. Uh, but the end of all of this to sum up is we are looking at the end of the eruption. If everything stays on course as it's been going over the past week or so uh, the end of the eruption will be early to mid august so if you've been waiting to go to the eruption now's the time to go and see it before it stops so that's it for now i will of course keep everyone updated as new information comes out and as always 
This is an ever-changing situation. We don't know what's going to happen. And of course, stay out of danger zones. Follow the instructions of the people that are there. If you're traveling over there, be safe. And thank you so much for watching.